everybody welcome back to my channel we're doing a reading vlog i'm so excited because things we hide from the light by lucy swore comes out today and i am just so excited if you don't know things we never got over is one of my favorite romance books i love this book to my soul things we hide from the light is the second book of like her little series that she has going on last night i started reading or not reading wait yeah what am I trying to say? So I'm gonna cut to that footage really fast. I am reading Things We Never Got Over again. I am on 101 and I forget how freaking fun this book is. It is just such a whirlwind of like, just so much happens in the first hundred pages that like you don't want to put the book down. Like I've been reading for I think maybe an hour and i have just been like i've been eating this book up granted i have read this so like it's not like new information to me but like i like forget some things that happened like obviously naomi gets to the town she meets Knox, she meets nash she meets uh lisa j is it lisa j or lisa j honestly i really don't know liza Liza. Liza J. She's at the library right now. She just met Salone. Like so much happens in a hundred pages. Like she meets so many people. I do remember now like rereading this. Knox gets on my freaking nerves sometimes. I like kind of forget that at the beginning he literally is such like he is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm like dude shut up. And I also forget that they're like 40 years old. In my brain they're like late 20s early 30s so i'm gonna keep imagining them like that but technically they're supposed to be 40. also completely forgot that Knox and nash are brothers completely forgot about that also this book is like really floppy and it's really easy for me to like read literally i started this book last night and i'm already on page 300. i just love this book so much it's so fast it's so easy to get into it literally hops like right into the story i love this green blue and pink tabs that i have right now it looks so freaking cute although one of my tabs like messed up if you can see one of the tabs i have it like completely like i don't know how that happened it like folded I don't know. I don't know how to fix it either. I kind of forget in this book because there's so much that happens. I kind of forget how obnoxious Knox is sometimes. Like I can definitely see why people don't like this book in some sense. He is like up her ass like almost the whole time. He's being he's just so rude to her for like really no reason but we know why he's like that but like he he's just so mean to her so i can definitely tell why people if they read this book and they didn't like it because of him also kind of forgot that he's blonde how did i not remember i like did not think i did not remember him being blonde he's like a dirty blonde it's not very like Obviously it's not that big of a deal, but I was not imagining him like that. That like ruined everything for me. I was like, wait, he's blonde? If you know, you know. I'll probably, honestly, I'll probably finish this today because I just love this book so much. I love, I just love this world. I love this story so much. So I'm gonna keep reading and I will update you along the way. I'm at the part where they're at Waylay's soccer game, like whatever. Naomi's kind of explaining the game to Steph a little bit. And this is one of the part. I'm gonna just read this out to you. Steph goes, look at you soccer mom. And Naomi replies, she goes, I may have done a little reading up on the sport, I said. I've done a lot of research. I've reread Rock Bottom Girl. And if you don't know, Rock Bottom Girl is a soccer romance that Lucy score has written that's like kind of wait that is so weird so i guess in this world lucy score is an author that naomi has read that's so confusing that's really funny that lucy score basically promoted she's like yeah rock bottom girl go read it <laughs> i'm gonna update i've been reading for about two hours 
and I'm on page 420. 420. Blaze it. Right now, I'm at the part where Knox is like, I don't want to love nobody. I don't want to get attached to nobody. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You love her. You love her. Just admit it. Just admit it. You love her. Get over it, babe. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, oh, Knox fumbling the bag right here. What the hell are you doing? That's where I'm at. You've learned so much more, I feel like, whenever you reread things. Like, cause sometimes the first time you're just so enthralled with the story. Second time you go through it, it feels like you're picking up a lot more details than you probably know than you probably first have. We just got introduced to his Nash's love interest in the second book. Her name is Lena, and we just found out that Lena is we 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 she's in this book. Like I did not know Lena was in this book at all. I just thought it was like a random girl or whatever, but she's in the book. And it's, she's like, it's kind of like this badass biker girl, kind of. Oh, she's Knox's ex-girlfriend. Man, Knox and Nash must be having very similar taste in women then. Sorry, I just had to put that out there. I was like, wait, I didn't, I don't remember this part of the book. responsibilities today I literally sat here like a fiend and read the whole book okay so I finished my reread of things we never got over look at all these beautiful tabs so pretty I've already have like consensus it's still five stars for me I still love this book I think everything in here is just so good and I think about this book a little too much I think for like a normal day-to-day -day basis I definitely think about this book a lot still there's like some parts I don't love about like I don't love how like the ending part it's very it's resolved very fast like I feel like the problems that they had it just just kind of forget about or he like Knox realizes that he actually wants to be with Naomi because she's kidnapped. <laughs> like, there's like some things that I'm like, okay. I don't love how easily resolved that was, but I'm gonna let it slide. This book is just so fun and it's just so, so good. And I guess I will see you on the day that I get my book. Hello everybody and good afternoon. Today is the day. The tank is wait, what's the what's the Nemo thing? Today's the day. The sun is shining. The tank is clean and we are getting out. <gasps> the tank is clean. <laughs> but today is the day. Ah, I'm so excited. I got my hands on things we had from the light. I actually got it yesterday, but this week, the week that I am filming this video has just been chaotic. So this week's been a little bit crazy, but I finally have finished every- well, I haven't finished anything. I'm actually about to go to a project meeting, so that's fun. But I'm bringing this with me for whenever I get done, so I'm gonna read it after my project. Also, the dedication to this is just so funny. In memory of Chris Waller, the reader husband who reached out and asked me to include the word gusset in a book just so he could win a bet with his wife. Kate, I hope it makes you smile when you find it again inside. That's so funny. Oh my god. If I had an author friend and I dared them to put a certain word in, my life would be achieved. Gonna be reading this. I'm running late for my project and that's nothing new, but I will see you later. <laughs> So far, I mean, uh, not like I feel like I'm not as sucked in to this book as I was things we never got over. But we do kind of know that like Lena is some kind of like she has like some shady business of some sort. 
Like she's like an she's like a FBI agent or something. I'm not really sure. And then Nash is kind of been kind of depressed and kind of just been not himself because of what had happened with the shooting, um, which had happened in the first book. So that's kind of honestly, that's really all that's been happening. Not much has really happened. He, they found a dog. They did find a dog. Her name's Piper. Although this one is like definitely, I feel like a lot more steamier than things we never got over. Like technically nothing has happened to them, but like there's a lot of like thoughts and like mentionings of them doing stuff together and whatever that I'm just like, oh my God, like it's a lot. Like, and it's like very vivid. Like when Nash is in the shower, I was like, oh my God, sir, this is too much. This one's definitely, I feel like a lot more spice forward I feel like then things we never got over like this book I'm just not like super I guess just super like enthralled in as I was in things we never got over but I'm still enjoying this I don't know something about this one I hope it doesn't give second book syndrome which it might I don't know it possibly could give that because kind of like right now it kind of just feels very lusty it doesn't feel like i'm not getting any like romantic romance i guess like they don't really know each other and he's already like kind of like starting to think they're both starting to already like think about each other like in that way whereas i felt like in things we never got over yes it was lusty and like spicy and stuff but it did like show like they both showed personality and that they showed that they cared for each other in like acts of service like it was a very acts of service kind of book I felt like but this one like I am not getting that the one thing I don't love about this book so far is how he calls her angel why does he call her angel at least in things we never got over Knox calls Naomi Daisy because she was wearing daisies in her hair when they first met which I felt like was kind of cute like I don't love pet names but I felt like in things we never got over whenever Knox calls Naomi Daisy it like made sense why does Nash call Lena angel I have to find the part where I was like what, what? yeah he just like he's like in the shower like doing his thing you know he he's like thinking of lena and while he's like talking out loud obviously obviously and he goes f yes angel like he says it out loud and then he says like she he's like thinking of her and whatever and she's like he's like angel and i'm like why why is her why is her pet name angel like that doesn't make sense usually like i wanted some meaning like why why I'm not getting the same vibes as things we never got over so far, which kind of makes me sad, but that's okay. But I am still enjoying this, so we're gonna keep riding. I don't like how he calls her Angel. Like, I just don't like it. It cringes me out a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. You heard that? Could have been me by the struts. Never heard of it before. Kind of like it though. In this scene, Lena and Nash are like slow dancing with each other. With that song in the background, just FYI, it's giving... <laughs> it's giving really, really cringe. This part is now becoming like, he basically just admitted to her that he just wants to like around with her because he he just basically opened his feelings to her already i'm like you barely know her it's page 109 you barely know her and she's kind of like caught off guard a little bit by this but it, like obviously she wants the same thing but she's definitely caught off guard by this i don't know it's giving like nash right now is giving ick right now for me i'm gonna be brutally honest not anything what i thought this book was going to be about definitely has potential to get better but every time he says angel a little part of my soul dies i'm not even gonna lie so um so far not live laugh loving this i'm living laughing but i'm not loving lucy score I, i'm catching you again i'm catching you in the act so to give you context lena 
and Nash are kind of having like a heart to heart moment. Lena has just found Nash like having a panic attack and like is helping him like get through it and blah blah blah. They're talking about how like Lena almost died and how she has this disease or has this thing wrong with her heart and how she almost died and this is what Lena says like they're like now trying to talk about her parents how her parents are like smothering her and whatever. She says I moved on, but my parents didn't. I guess there's something about seeing your only child nearly die in front of your eyes that changes the parents, so they worry. Still, chalk that up to the things we never get got over column. Miss Lucy, you're not slick. I know what you're doing. Doing little self promos in these. just happened in this one chapter chapter 22 so much just went down in that oh my god i'm like having to process everything so much i mean so basically we kind of understand well now we kind of know what like why lena is in town she's like an investigator for like property i guess she's like trying to track down this car that duncan hugo has stolen from like a client so that's why she's like down there to like find this car or whatever in this chapter like everybody is mad at everyone and honestly i'm just like why is everyone upset <laughs> like everybody is so mad at each other and i'm just like what is going on basically nash and lena right now i don't know how the hell they're supposed to get back together i just don't like either of them right now like either of them are pissing me off and i'm like shut up hopefully the second part gets better because this first part right here, I was trudging through it a little bit. It was kind of hard. I literally don't care about Nash and Lena, honestly. And I really don't know how they're supposed to get back together at the end of this book. Because their trust has been completely, both of them, like their trust has been completely broken. I don't know how they're supposed to get back together and last. I This better, this better show me. Because if not, then this ain't it. So... Okay, we're in Lena's point of view. Like I said, they had the fight and whatever, and Naomi and Salone and Steph have taken Lena. Like, they've taken, like, they want to, like, understand her side and stuff, so they've taken her to, like, a bar, and they're, like, talking or whatever. They were just talking, like, Naomi was like, you do realize why he likes honesty so much. She's like, no. He's like, well, their dad is an addict. Like, he would lie to them constantly, and they would never know the truth, and that's why he appreciates honesty. But then... This is what Lena says. Lena says this. However, unpopular opinion here, you're not responsible for how you were brought up, but you are responsible for your actions and re actions and reactions once you're an adult, which I don't disagree about. But you are doing the same thing. Your actions and reactions that you have as an adult, you are doing the same thing. Like she's literally doing the exact same thing. Like she's lying to all these people. She keeps constantly lying because she doesn't want people to worry about her because that's how she was when she was getting raised. Like her parents would always worry about her. So that's why she would lie and tell them everything's fine. Tell people everything's fine so people wouldn't have to worry about her like her parents did growing up. So you are doing the same thing. <sighs> okay. I don't find Lena redeeming sometimes. Like she does things that are super hypocritical. I feel like I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> What? What are you doing? Grow up. I don't know. She gives me such immature vibes to me still. I don't know. And I feel for her, like, her story, like, how she almost died and stuff. But, like, keeps all this stuff away from her parents and stuff who were gonna worry about her. I'm just, like, some people would love to have, like, parents that would overreact about their mental health. Or, just, like, or about them, you know? Like, parents that are attentive to them. Literally, Nash has a very unattentive father. You're basically bitching about how you have over attentive parents like that is so like i don't know i feel like that is so tone deaf of her i feel like i don't know every time she brings up how her parents are so over attentive and stuff which i understand can be annoying but like it's not like they're there constantly they're not watching your life and making it abusive no they're just concerned about you because you almost died I'm gonna keep reading. I just, I, every time they call her a badass, I literally, or like, people are like, she's so cool. She's such a bad girl. Such a badass. I'm like, how? How is she a badass? Like, she's kind of aloof 
and she's kind of this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, that doesn't make her a badass, though. Like, to me, she just seems very ignorant. Like, she gives ignorance. Sometimes she, like, says stuff, and I'm just like, shut up. I got, in this book, Naomi and Salone, their friendship together has just blossomed in this book. Like, they definitely, like, in the first book, they definitely, like, were friends and stuff. But in this one, like, they're just such good friends. They're so funny together. In this book, part I'm reading Lena has to get like this guy or whatever he's like a felon or something and she needs to get him right but Salone and Naomi are drunk and so they try to distract the guy like they're not supposed to but like he, she's they're trying to distract the guy they're like do you even want to know why how you distracted him and she's like okay and she, Naomi's like I, I threw a bag of dog poop I found on the sidewalk on him and then Sloan goes and I yelled and flashed him my boobs. That whole chapter where they're just drunk together is just so funny. Like they are so cute together. Like they're just such fun friend vibes. I loved it. to finish this book today. I'm on page 405. Honestly, this book has been feeling really, really long. Like, I feel like this is almost too long. And I love things we never got over. Like, I love the first book. And that book is long too. Like, don't get me wrong. That book is long. But like, it didn't feel long because I was just enjoying every single moment of this. However, this one is starting to feel long like it's starting to feel a little redundant and it's starting to feel slow and this is like the part where like lena and nash are like finally together or something like that they're like going on their first date together or whatever and i don't know i was thinking about this last night i was thinking i was like you know what i feel very hot and cold about this book and the relationship as a general just feels very Sorry, I feel like I got crap on my face. Like, there's parts of this that I enjoy because I like these characters already from things we never got over. They have been established already. And I love seeing glimpses of this found friend, found family, found friendship aspect. Like, the found family aspect is really good in these books and it really carries in this one. I'll, I'll read you what I don't like it because Nash is, like, depressed, right? And Lena is the only person that gives him life in some sense, which... I don't know. I feel like that's like a really bad message to send. You're depressed and this one person is your light and whatever. Like you shouldn't be reliant on one person to make you happy. And that's like a big theme in this book where like Nash is telling Lena like I need you to be my support. I need you to be my support. How did she not run away like the first time he said that to her? Like if someone said like you're going to be my support and you're going to be my depression. Like you're going to be the light for my depression. And I barely know them. I would have ran. I would have ran. I don't know how Lena didn't. She already does run. Why didn't she go? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Nash and Lena are very toxic for some reason. Like they give toxic vibes a little bit. Also, I kind of realized that he calls her Angel because her name is Angelina. Angelina. So Angel, Angelina, Angel. That make makes sense now. I don't know. I felt like they hated each other and then all of a sudden they're like like each other and then it's like why is he getting so mad at her? Why is she so mad? Like everyone's emotions in this book make no f sense. It, it felt like a switch up like really quick. Maybe that's why I feel so mixed emotions about this is because the switch ups in this are crazy. Like all of a sudden everybody's mad at each other and then we're all friends and then we're friends and then we all hate each other. That's the same thing that's happening between Nash and Lena too. I thought Nash was going to be the stable one out of the group. His whole relationship with Lena feels like the most unstable one. So I'm so so lost. I don't know. I don't know how I feel because I loved the first book and I just don't like this one as much. I'm just so sad. <sighs> I wish this wasn't cringe. I just want to cry. I am mortified. I literally, I just talked to you. Like that last clip you just saw, I literally just talked to you. I talked to you while I was on page 405. I am now on page we're 10, five pages later, and they are public. <laughs>
Bonk. No! Bonk. No! Bonk. No! I'm not a PDA gal. Like, I don't like it when people make out or like a little quick kiss. I'm like, yeah, that's cute, like whatever. But I hate when people are like making out in public, basically touching all over each other in public is literally disgusting. Like I legitimately hate it. And he's <laughs> Bonk. No! Bonk. No! They're in a restaurant right now, right? They're having dinner. And then finally the waiter has come back to be like, do you want dessert? And so they're like, Bonk. No! <laughs> the waiter, they're like, okay, so before the waiter comes, I guess, they're like talking or whatever, and like he has his hand on her like leg or her knee or whatever, and she's like opening up her leg, like teasing him, like, what kind of underwear am I wearing? <laughs> and so his hand is like on her thigh, so she's, he's like, like going to her, you know? And he is, oops her in this restaurant while they're talking to a waiter Bonk. no Bonk. no why 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 i just don't why is he oops her in a restaurant and like a nice restaurant they're supposed to be like 30 like five or something the, oh, not that like I just, why? Why? This is so bad. I know it's supposed to be like naughty, like oh my god, we're just such a, like she's such a rebellious girl, like she's just so cool, she's a badass, and he is taking a trip on the wild side. Bonk. No. Bonk. No. God, I was not ready for that. I thought they were just gonna have like a nice dinner and then they would kind of like be playful or whatever and then just be like, okay, time to go home and like bang it out. They're still at the restaurant. Disgusting. That is disgusting. Nobody in that restaurant wants to see, like if someone happened to look over and you're Oops. your partner, absolutely disgusting. Bonk. No. Bonk. No, this is so gross. I don't care. I don't care who you are. This is so gross. Why? Why, why is he Oops. hurt in the restaurant? Bonk. No, it's not sexy. It's weird. It's not sexy. It's weird. Lucy score. Why? Why did you have to put that in? I hate that. <laughs> what is going on? I just Bonk. No, and the waiter. Bonk. No. Bonk. No. Bonk. No. I <laughs> Oh my god, I hate that! Oh my god, Bonk. no! Bonk. No! No! I just wanted to say I committed to this bit so hard that I drank an entire water bottle and I'm halfway done with this one, so... Proof. Ew! And then the waiter comes back like, here's your cheesecake and your check! As she on his fingers. Ew! Okay, I'm done reading for today. <laughs> I'm done reading that scene. I have to hop on the Zoom now. That is, oh, disgusting. <laughs>to feel like a legitimate drag i feel like we get somewhere in the story and then we degress and then we get somewhere and then we degress like it's very this book is very hot and cold right now like that's how it is it's starting to get annoying where like lena and nash well it's more lena than nash lena for some reason has this like arbitrary like i'm just the bad girl like i need my independence and it's starting to get so annoying literally i am on page or 66 there is this much left of this book and obviously they like each other like nash is like oh no we're dating like we're dating this is what we're doing we're dating and she's like oh that's like i don't want to do that blah 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 like no i don't want to like that's kind of scary and she's like low-key freaking out about it but i'm like ma'am 
you obviously care about him. You've had so many come to Jesus moments about this that it's literally starting to piss me off. So many people have talked to her. Nash has talked to her. Her friends have talked to her. Knox has even f talked to her about this. Like she's had so many come to Jesus moments. Like, yeah, you're like this. Yes, you're like this. Maybe you should fix this. Maybe you should fix that. And she just keeps degressing in every single chapter. Like she has some progress and then she'll completely degress. And I bet something will happen and then all of a sudden it'll be like a complete 180 like oh my god I'm cured I'm fixed Th that's what's gonna happen she literally is starting to drive me insane she's trying to seem aloof and like she doesn't really care what Nash really does and she doesn't want him to have labels when she does like stop lying she is such a liar this whole book this whole book she lies so much and she's like no i'm just omitting the truth bitch you are lying you are lying there's like mo like i said there's moments i love her and i'm like oh my god she's progressing this is so good for her and then she just degresses so much so much like i said she's had so many so many moments where i'm just like what are you doing same with nash like i'm just like what are y'all doing like how are y'all together? I'm so mad, okay? Anyways, I'm done. <laughs> I'm going. Guys, I genuinely don't think I can finish this book. Literally, what I said in my last section of this, how it feels like we're going one step forward, three steps back. Literally, that's just what happened. A pretty big step forward. And now a character, Nash, decides to be having four billion steps behind because he's scared of that he's gonna turn out like his dad and there was like a section where they were talking like we our parents don't define us we're not our parents and we make our own decisions and now he's doing the exact same thing that they were talking about i just can't I can't. I can't. Like, how do people give this five stars? Like, I'm just getting angry now. Like, I was enjoying it. Now I'm mad. I'm just mad. I feel like this third act conflict is ridiculous. I am just over it. Like, I'm over it. Honestly, the only reason I'm staying to the end is so I can see Naomi and Knox's wedding. Like, that's all I care about. <sighs> Absolutely mad. Literally, we just got to the part where he's like, I don't think we can do this anymore. Get out. Bitch, shut up. This whole book you have been trying to make, like, you're my person. I need you. I need you. Blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden you're like, no, get out. I don't want to, I don't want you to be the crutch anymore. <clears throat> but this is giving toxic. This is giving gross, disgusting behavior from both of them. Like, I don't like either of them anymore. Why can not we have gotten Lucien and Salome? And then we could have gotten them. I'm just going to quickly read this. And hopefully the next time I see you, I will uh, I will be done with this. I just also want to let you know that be just because I'm tapping this book does not mean this is good. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more tabbing because I like how it looks and i think it looks pretty and i'm already i already started it so i have to finish it he tells her to get lost and then she's like no i know you're hurting right now so i'm just gonna give you some space whatever and then the next day he's like i'm so sorry i just don't know why i said that and now they're like i said he is such a hot and cold person he's either all in or he's all out and it makes me so mad and it's like so back and forth this relationship feels so toxic <laughs> BFFR, be so for real right now. This bad guy scene is so bad. Like, at least in, like, things we never got over, like, what happened felt, like, kind of natural and stuff. This one is so bad. The way the bad guy's talking is so cringe. Let me just read this. It feels like a cartoon character bad guy. If you know, you know. She, like, finds out who the guy is. I won't say who it is, but she finds out who this is. And he goes, I hope you're not talking about me. And so she's like, so we meet again. I say coyly. He's like, for 
fuck's sake, the bed guy muttered. Oh my god. Like, they don't even, like, he doesn't even have a name. This guy is so low-key irrelevant. This guy doesn't even have a real name. Like, I thought this guy would be, like, some other person. No, this reveal was so stupid. Lucy, I'm so sorry, but babe, what were you doing in this book? Well, I'm done. Guys, um, I would skip this book. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, it, I like, there's parts that I definitely enjoyed in this and I was like, oh my god, I love this, this is so good. But Nash and Lena, this romance, not good. I did not enjoy it. It's very, in my opinion, low-key toxic, it's insta-love, it's lusty, which is, lusty is inherently bad, but when the only reason these characters get together is because they want to fuck each other and that's no other reason like i feel like they had no other connection besides a sexual connection i felt like they don't know each other at all honestly they argue more than they get along i don't know why they ended up together the ending to this is very similar i feel like in some context it's very similar to things we never got over i didn't like this in things we never got over and i don't love it in this book either it's whenever they the guys propose because you know at the end they're gonna get together but the way they propose in like a life or death situation i'm just like why are you doing that that's so stupid i don't know the way he was like yeah you're gonna be my we're gonna get married i'm like shut up shut up i just couldn't be happy for them like i just don't care i did not like them together i think they're toxic together i don't know like i felt like there's too much bad in this book to outweigh the good and this book was so hard for me to get into. I think I'm going to give it two stars. I don't want to say that. Okay. I'm done. Oh, God. Let me go get my other book so I can sign off. So I'm done with this video. <laughs> How did this turn into this? I don't get it. I guess, conclusion, things we never got over, read things we never got over, it is so good. You get the found family aspect, you get a small town romance, you get grumpy sunshine. Sometimes Knox can be a little bit annoying, I think in some sense. But like, I just love how they, they balance each other out. I feel like their love languages are very similar. I don't understand how this one and this one are so different, yet similar. But also, this one was just so bad. Love this one though. I don't understand how this one was so good and this one was just not. I just, it was the characters, I guess. It was the development of their relationship. I just did not like it. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this reading vlog. I know it was kind of a, it took a little bit of a turn. If you like more reading vlogs, let me know. I definitely am going to be reading the last book that comes out in September, but we got a little bit. Um, but thank you so much for watching this reading vlog, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye!